There's Jim up there. What's he? Where's he at today? Is he down in Mexico still, or is he at the airport? Uh, the picture's down in Mexico. I'm still in St. Louis. Uh, okay. So you're not at the airport, though? No, not this time. How's your airplane coming along? I was doing okay. I need to fly it more. I'm looking at the weather tomorrow. The weather tomorrow, I think, is supposed to be better, so I need to look. Do you, do you have your maintenance? Did you get your maintenance done? Yeah, it's all re done and flyable. I still have some things to do, but nothing that's going to make it un unairworthy. So it's uh, I got to re reupholster the back seat, and I've got all that. I just have to get it done. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Morning, Lloyd. There's Lloyd sneaking in. He's down in Texas. Morning. Ah, just in in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is he, there's Carrie. Oh, yeah. See, we got oh, maintenance. I was maintaining my motorhome yesterday. Got the oil changed and got the furnace fixed. All ready for my next trip. Where are you going? Uh, I'm not sure. Not sure. Got to get got to get that planned. Okay. It'll be after we get our kitchen remodeled. Oh, so it can be a. It's going to be a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly if it goes like most kitchen remodels when you're living in it yeah it goes a lot longer than than i do in my rehabs <laughs> at least you're not redoing the kitchen in your motorhome <laughs> no. no it's done <laughs> sounds good hmm. we've been just talking about goals and about a lot of things this morning and a lot of good stuff yeah good our meeting got changed a little bit on Tuesday. I guess we can talk about that more in a little bit. I want to depend you to talk about that. What exactly what uh, the uh, the Tuesday means? How that's going to go? Yeah, we got a few things. I got a few things we'll share. A lot of good stuff going on um, too right now. Uh, I know we we haven't really had a chance to talk. Uh, we haven't had a board meeting in a in a month or so either. Um, but we got a lot of good stuff coming up this year. Oh, okay. Dana just put in the chat the uh, looks like the marshmallow test. So yeah, thank you, Dana, for sharing that with us. This Absolutely. Is the, there might be a better one, so I'm just going to keep looking. It's our delayed gratification <laughs> test they did back. I think this was that back in the '60s, if I remember right. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Some really good good bits of wisdom in that test too just to see how people are i know they they went and uh, followed up years later probably a couple of decades later with the people to see how how successful they were in life and it pretty much kind of worked the same way as the uh, test went so if you got a ch you got a chance it's worth checking out mm. you, you can have it all yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple of things we'll share with you. We'll give Kathy a few minutes. I haven't talked to her today. She um, she said last week she would be here. I know her husband's going through a lot of stuff with his medical procedures. He had a transplant, and there's a lot of follow-up things. I know they've been uh, scheduling that the first Friday of the month. I don't know if it was because of the holidays and some of that other stuff, but uh, let me, I could go check. Let me go check my, uh, let me go check, let me check my email and see if I've heard from her um let's see here no i don't see nothing from her okay so we'll just assume she's going to be here and if not we got lots of stuff to talk about uh yeah why don't we go ahead and uh, get started and if kathy comes in we'll 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 break away and uh uh let her say her her piece uh, does uh, Laura want to take a uh, go through a little uh, disclosure? Yeah, let's let's do that. Um, here, can you? Here. Hi there. Good morning and welcome, everyone. First, I'd like to do a bit of housekeeping. Feel free to unmute yourself when it's your turn to speak. Please be mindful of everyone else by muting yourself while others are speaking. You're welcome to put any contact information that you want to share into the chat. We are here to share deals, look for deals and solutions we have and need with our real estate. We are not your financial advisors, attorney, or accountants. We do not endorse, recommend, or recommend any specific solutions or contractors here. You're advised to do your own due diligence to, the, to your own satisfaction before you invest. The first Friday of each month is Ask the Attorney with Katherine Davis. 
Our meetings are typically recorded, so only share what you want others to know. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Laura. Uh, so until we get uh, uh, Kathy Davis, come on, we'll always go ahead and start our, our normal uh, Friday networking uh, with, uh, this is St. Louis Real Estate mm -hmm. Investors uh, Friday networking on uh, January 13th, uh, 2023. Uh, we got uh, John Lee, myself. Uh, see, we got Jim Choik, are all board members. Um, got Bruce Stotler, he's a longtime member and a, a previous board member. I'm glad to hear everybody else here too. Got a lot of uh, real estate experience here. So, uh, well, it, do you want to go ahead and talk first about uh, we, our next Tuesday? This is the, the, the third third Tuesday of January. So we'll have our monthly meeting at the Shriners. Uh, John, you want to talk about our, our program that we're going to have then? Sure. Um, let's see here. Uh, we, yeah, we originally had Peter Hoffman um, from the Legal Services of Eastern Missouri going to be here and talk to us about the Neighborhood Vacancy Initiative. There's over 25,000 uh, properties in St. Louis City alone um, that are vacant. And um, <laughs> he's going to, he had a previous commitment in, uh, down in, I believe it's in Phoenix or somewhere in Arizona. And so he's, we, we've had to, Put him now. Um, we, we've re rearranged the schedule. He's coming in February now, which is the uh, I think it's the 21st, if I remember right. And um, yeah, 21st. So, yeah. So uh, he will be here on the 21st of February. He did offer to have another uh, another attorney come come and talk to us. But we just kind of mutually agreed that it'd be better to have him um, have him talk because he's really the head guy. And and he's the one that really uh, heads up the initiative there. So we decided to do that. So what we're going to do is we decided to kind of have uh, kind of more of an informal meeting, more like a, I guess, like a town hall, I kind of called it, but I guess we can call it whatever you want. But we're just going to look at some things like, uh, I call it your GPS, your goals, plans, and strategies for the year. Um, I've looked up a, a lot of things in some of the local market and some uh, national of what, you know, what some of the experts, so-called experts are um, predicting and and, you know, the way the trends are going some, and also some local things in the local market. And um, I also talked just briefly to, um, to Carrie is Carrie, I believe Carrie's here to somewhere. Yeah. yeah, there she is. She's going to talk to us a little bit about the local market with uh, lending and some of the stuff that, you know, where she's very gracefully comes on every week and fills us in on what's going on too. Um, it, from New Frontier Bank, she's uh, local here. So she knows really, you know, it's always nice to have local people because you can really see what's going on in our area because you can get all the look at all the trends and the stuff going on around the nation. But, you, you know, um, and I've noticed this with a lot of investors, even coming to our group, some of them are members, but people from all, all over the place, you don't necessarily know the individual markets in the regions. You know, I mean, I had a guy a few years ago and I, you know, I've shared this with some of you guys that a uh, guy that gave me nine houses for free because the investors came in from out West, bought a bunch of houses, didn't know what they were doing. They were in the wrong neighborhoods. So, I mean, there's just stuff that you, we don't know that we find out from meeting here locally. So. That's uh, that's kind of what you know what we're going to have on Tuesday. So uh, be sure and mark your schedules if you can make it on location. The Moolah Shrine Center, I would highly recommend doing it. It's a great place if you haven't been there yet. Um, really cool. I, I was a little, you know, I didn't know what we were getting into when we first uh, went there. I don't know what this is our second year now. I guess we're into this, and it was different than the realtor building that we've been into for I don't know decades. And, um, you know, just we didn't know what we we're getting into, but this new place has so much room and it's just, um, I mean, parking, everything is just great about it, you know, so if, if uh, you haven't been there, I highly recommend showing up and just checking it out and come and see everybody in person. It's always good to see people on location. So that's what we got coming up as far as the meeting goes. Um, I have some other stuff I'll sh I want to share, but do you want to go ahead and Anything else you wanted to say on that? Uh, uh, no, no, no. Just glad to uh, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, hope to see everybody out and uh, have a big, big crowd in January to get the year kicked off at the uh, uh, at the Shriners. That's a nice. It is a nice facility. Yeah, it's very a lot, of, a lot of space, and we got room to grow. Plenty of seats for for more more folks to show up. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, 
Okay, well, as far as networking, uh, um, who wants to start it out today? Got something near, uh, you're looking to sell? Uh, we got any wholesalers They have something under under contract? We got some other investors here that are looking for a project, so uh, you can probably find a buyer here today. Or if you got a service uh, that you're re related to real estate, uh, that you uh, wanted to let our our members know about here, you can uh, chime in here and uh, talk about that. Or you got a problem and you're looking for scratching your head and what to what to do with it. We got a lot of problem solvers here too. That's what a lot of a lot of real estate investing is about: is solving somebody else's problems. And and uh, it's we're here to help. Glad to see uh, Melissa is on. Let's say Edney from uh, One Way Construction and Roofing. Uh, something I just put in the chat there. This is uh, you can get this book free today if you wanted today and tomorrow. I think it's through the fourteenth. Um, this is a guy I talked to last night. He is locally here in town, but he just wrote this book on asset protection for real estate investors. And I read it yesterday. Um, it's it's really a a really good book. It's uh, a lot of things that we all need to do as far as protection to keep from getting sued and to make yourself a little anonymous. And um, he's going to talk to our group. We haven't figured out a time yet or a, you know, a, a date yet, but Gary Bates is the guy's name. And uh, if you go, this is his website, you can go to Amazon and find it too, if you want to do that. But his website, if you just look right on there and right next to the book, it'll say, buy this book here. Just click on that yellow uh, little tab there. It'll take you to Amazon. You get the Kindle version. He, he gave me a PDF copy um, a couple weeks ago, which I, if, if I get permission for him, I can give that out. But right now I know you can get that on Amazon for, for no cost. Uh, during the promotion. And I think what he's really looking for is a um, review, which I did leave him this morning, but this is really a good book and it goes, it really explains this very well. I know we've had a couple people in the past over the so, you know, last few years that have talked to our group about, uh, about putting your things in trust, um, whether it's land trust or even your, you know, he calls them toys sometimes, but like your cars, boats, air, airplanes, Jim, all that kind of stuff. You can put it in your, uh, put it in a trust. It gives you some anonymity and it also protects you in case somebody wants to sue you. Cause you know, God forbid you have a renter or somebody, or they're having a visitor and they fall on your steps and then they get a, one of those lawyers that want to sue everybody. Cause there's a lot of them out there today. Um, and they will, they will sue you. So there we go. I didn't think I hit. Yeah, there we go. It's in the yeah, chat right there. So if you want to go get that, I would highly recommend getting a copy of his book. Um, if you got a Kindle, which I'm not a big, I'm not big on reading on Kindle. Although I did <laughs> first time in my life, I read two books yesterday and his was one of them. The other one was a little bit shorter, but um, well worth it. Well worth it there. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I'll have to check with her. If I can chime in, mm -hmm. I'm Linda. I'm a baby investor. So um, I just, I guess, need you guys to kind of help me fill in the blanks. And I'll kind of tell you where I am. I um, bought a property back in 2019, and it kind of fell in my lap. <laughs> what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to become debt free. And I'm wondering if this is a way of helping me kind of get to that point. I'm matured. I'm in a, that senior age where I collect social security type thing. Um, but here's where I am with the property. Like I said, it kind of fell in my lap. A friend of mine uh, had the property and they were tired of just the real estate market. They had some uh, residential and commercial property that they were selling. And they gave it to me way below market uh, price. So, and I'll just run the numbers by you. I paid $50,000 for it in 2019. Um, it needed some work done. So I went ahead and updated everything in there. And um, we were thinking of maybe selling the property now and just clearing up our debt. 
um, and then just kind of starting over fresh. So I will say this, we bought the property at $50,000. The way the market has adjusted right now, uh, it's a townhouse, uh, two bedroom, one and a half bath. Uh, the unit two doors down from me uh, is a three bedroom, two bath. That one recently sold for $219,000. So there's equity there. Um, and I guess my question is, is this the right time for me to go ahead and maybe sell it and clear up my debt or refinance it? And I know the interest rate is at 6.9% or whatever it is. I'm just trying to figure out where I need to go from here. Is that a, a good scenario? But that's where I am with this. Okay, I guess a lot depends on what your your goals are. You know, if you want, is um, it sounds like for that uh, has it been a rental property or just it's just been vacant? It's vacant home. You Actually, it's a rental property, and we, it's rented way below the market because when we purchased the property, there was a young couple with a little baby. They were just getting started and trying to find a place to live. So we kind of rented it out to them. They've been very good. They keep the property up. I don't have any problems. I go and I uh, once a year have the air condition service and maintenance and stuff like that. Um, I just go by just to check to make sure everything's okay. Um, but I, I think that was probably a bad mistake on our part, but it's rented, they're good tenants, but it's way under the market. Well, yeah, I'm going to say, if you're thinking about contemplating selling it, uh, uh, you need to get your rents back up to a, a market value. Okay. And uh, that, that would be my, my advice to, but and if they're, if they're going to be, you know, shortly and you want to, you want to put it on the market uh, just for the general market for uh, owner occupy owner occupancy um, yeah it'd be best to have the, the tenant out of there have it freshed up freshened up and and uh, another you know move in ready for somebody uh, a, a potential buyer okay um anybody else got any advice or comments for uh, how, uh, what's the monthly payment on the house Okay, the monthly payment is a thousand dollars, but the rent in that area is going for like sixteen hundred. Uh, I don't care about the rent in the area, but why? Uh, how much are you renting for right now? A thousand dollars a month. <laughs> so, so that means you cannot demand the sixteen hundred dollars because if somebody will pay you sixteen hundred dollars, you certainly will rent to somebody paying you that. So, yes. because you cannot get six hundred, therefore you only get one thousand. So, mm -hmm. I don't buy the why the market is, is 1600 or your house is not up to the standard to demand 1600, okay? And all, so the, I, all the, it's a townhouse. That is the cheapest rent in that. I don't care, I don't care. Building. It can be million dollar next door. I'm currently asking your current unit condition what it can demand for in the market. Okay, okay. so when how I'm much do you total owe, owe on the property? I don't owe anything, I paid it out cash. You paid it out cash because the I townhouse paid it doesn't cash. have a, does it have a, 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 what, a condo fee? There is no condo fee. I put a privacy fence up in the back. I put a new roof on there. I put new appliances in there. Because like that's, I said, I bought that's it. That's not my question. That's not my question. My question is uh, how much uh, uh, the expenses on the property when it's free and clear, the taxes, insurance, any other fees? You know? The taxes are running me $1,000 a year. The insurance is running me like $1,200 a year. Everything else is income coming in. So, so your, 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 your cost property. is $200 a month and you're getting uh, $1,000 a month, right? Yes, yes. So why, why, why uh, okay. What's the zip code of the property, by the way? School district. 32547. What's the school district? What's the school? Uh, there's a high school and a middle school there. There's what's the um, high school? What's the high school? What's the high school school district? Sorry, Talk can I head. jump in just for a second? Is this property located in Missouri or? Um, it's in what? Florida. In Florida, oh, okay, because you, oh. okay, that that's a, a, a <laughs> you should have led sorry. with that, okay. Oh, that's <laughs> I'm, I'm in Florida. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Yes. So there's nothing, there is no debt or anything on the property. And I'll share personal information with you. 
my total personal debt is about fifty thousand dollars. What do you mean? You you say you don't owe anything. What do you mean you have debt? Well, my husband have debt. When you're married, you kind of take it along with you. I don't <laughs> have any debt. debt. That's his debt. In his name, it has nothing to do with you. Well, a lot of stuff we have. If I can get him cleared up, then I'm cleared up. I, I don't know. Why? Anyway, why? Why? It's not in your name. Is the house in your name or, or in both of your names? It's in both of our names, but there's no mortgage or anything on there. Why is it in both of our names? If you paid for it, and she, he that didn't pay for it. I just <laughs> add him to the mortgage. I agree a little. Yeah. What do you mean the mortgage? There's no mortgage. Did you not say it's a Okay, I added him to the deed. I'm sorry. He's on the deed because he's my husband. When we got married, that's what couples do. They share things mm. no, right so no, I, no, i'm sorry no, i'm going to interject no. here because i think it's going it's getting a little derailed no. and yes, we don't want is. to yeah yes, and I, it, it doesn't yeah so let's let's get back on track so your original question was um what should you do with your property and kind of like lloyd was saying it kind of comes up to you what what do you want to do and it sounds like you do want to sell it you don't want the monthly income coming in which is okay if that's what you would like to do um, I think, um, as mentioned, um, if you want to put it on the market and get the most for your return, put some a little bit of money in it, um, some paint, new carpet. I'm not sure what updates need to be made. And then you can kind of go from there. Um, would you be interested in selling it on your own? Would you go to a real estate investor? They would be able to advise other things that you um, should do. I'm not sure if your tenant has a lease. Um, I personally think houses sell faster if there is not a tenant in there. Um, is your tenant, I think you mentioned they've been there for quite some time. Would they be interested in a, in a, um, a lease to own? Would they be interested in that? That's an option. But it sounds like in general, you just want to sell the property to get the cash. As, I mean, I don't want to say as soon as possible, but your end goal is to sell it to get a lump sum. Is that correct? That is correct. The other thing is I'm not in a hurry to sell it. Uh, in gold, in gold, I have grandchildren. And what I would like to do is if I sold that property, and I've been looking into other properties in the south end of Florida, is relocating down there. Now, my home here in Florida, I'm going to use that as an Airbnb. That's kind of where my focus is here. So when I made that comment about, you know, my husband being on there, that's kind of one of the things when we got married, it was kind of, we do things together. However, that's no here or there, but that's what I was looking for. And uh, Amber, I think you kind of just hit on the head exactly where I am. Should I do a lease option? Um, and I've talked to the tenants about that. They don't want to buy it. Uh, the lease will be up in April. Um, I actually did all the paperwork myself when I bought the property. Mm -hmm. I did everything. Um, I got a title company to kind of hand carry me through so I could sell it with the realtor. I could sell it on my own. Um, I do a lot of research on the internet and Google and all that other kind of stuff. So anyway, I just, I guess need to just figure out what I want to do. You're right. So what's my end goal on this? Exactly. Property? That's what it all comes down to. What, okay. what do you want to do? And once you, you figure out that answer, then it'll lead you to your next path. So if you want the lump sum, which is great, then yes, sell them the house. Um, if your tenants want, I mean, that you said they don't want it. So, I mean, it, this is business. It's nothing personal. Right. Um, so once their lease is up, that's when I would put it on the market, um, me, me, myself personally, but others may have a different opinion. Um, but it sounds like you bought it, you know, without help of a realtor, which you can sell it without the help, help of a realtor. Uh, you can, you can do it. Um, and this group can definitely help you once you get to the place when you're fully ready to make that decision, what do you want to do? Okay. All right. I appreciate you. Lynn, I'd like to throw out something totally different. Okay. I, th I think you'd be a nut to sell it because you got it priced right. It can be long-term income for you. And there's other ways to get cash out of it to clear up your other debt if you want to do that. Okay. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a buy and hold guy. You will okay. never buy another property like that there. So it I could know. be the beginning of something really wealthy. 
It's okay. all on how you handle it. And one of the first things you're going to have to do is raise that rent. Okay. Uh, no, no matter what happens, but I, I think I think you'll kick yourself in the butt the rest of your life if you sell that now. Okay. Uh, you know, you get that lump sum. You got taxes to pay. Yes. You know, there's disadvantages in that. And uh, you, yeah, you Dwayne. Can... I mean, I agree, Lynn. You mentioned um, your grandkids at one point, and I apologize. I don't think we let you get that statement out, but it okay. would think about if you if that's their first house. You know, I I definitely agree. But it's up to you. What do you want to do okay. um, with that property? That could be a starter home for your grandkids, and they could okay. you know go in from person to person, whatever the case is. Um, you could leverage against it to put them to, in college. There are different okay. benefits to owning that asset. But again, what, what does Lynn want to do? That's, you got some hard questions you got to answer. And you know what? I appreciate you guys. And that, that's a better option for me. And you're right. I probably would 10 years down the road hate myself for saying, hey, you know what? It was a bird in the hand and I just let it go. So you're right, those are the options are available. And like I said, I'm not pressured to do one thing or the other. Um, the reason for being here is because you guys are a lot wiser than I am. Like I said, I'm a baby investor. I'm just learning this stuff. So um, I appreciate all the advice. Well, Lynn, another thing you can do if you need $50,000 is all you're looking for and that's worth that much money, you can get a commercial line of credit through mm -hmm. uh, a lender and therefore you walk away with your money. And I have always said that having a line of credit is like owning a gold mine, especially where you don't have an underlying mortgage except for the line of credit. Okay. Because it gives you the advantage of putting all of your spare cash into it. And if you need money back, like some of these people quote, you know, I need six months in, in of cash there. You just go down and take it back out of your property because that's the way line of credits work. Okay. The, the only disadvantage is until you get to know your lending institution, you'll have to do a, a reapply every year and do a, a net worth, which isn't a big deal once you get used to doing it. But the first time it's a real pain. Okay. But I okay. think you're sitting on a gold mine and I'd hate to see you sell it. Okay. All and right. You, I appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. You you might, if you want some phone numbers, I'm sure there's people that would give you their phone numbers and then find somebody that you actually, you know, click with and then okay. use them for advice. Okay. It, I mean, that's a, your choice if you want that or not. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. I have yeah. I have a few thoughts just real quick. Um, and um, you may, you probably have already thought of this, Lynn, but um, I'll just say uh, your tenant's lease is up in April. It may very well be that if you raise the rent, maybe just below what you could get in the market or even, you know, if you want to go market, that's all, of course, that's all your choice. But it may be that if you raise the rent, they actually would be willing to pay it. I mean, they've been there. They obviously are happy where they are, the location and the amenities, whatever. So they may be willing to pay it. But the other side is too, is if you are going to raise the rent and they can't pay it or, you know, uh, they would want, I, I don't know what your laws are in Florida, but, you know, you'd like to give them, right, a couple months notice that they have plenty of time to find a new place that they're going to move to. And their lease, you know, they'd ride through the lease because, you know, but just to put all that out there, uh, advance notice, and okay. also they may want to pay that money. Okay. And that will work too, because like yeah. I said, April is right around the corner. Yeah. And down in Florida, they do, uh, you know, they do a lot of Airbnb and they're also doing the short-term rentals. And I can't tell the difference between a short-term rental and an Airbnb personally. <laughs> But I mean, they all make money and the smart people buy it as a rental is what they say and then do the Airbnb. And if it doesn't make money, you can go back to renting it out. So, you know, you could have a whole lot of money there that you can use and access to that. You just need, like you say, somebody to help guide you that understands the market. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, you got a couple, a couple options there presented to you by our, some of our investors. Also, uh, I see uh, in the chat, uh, uh, Jennifer is asking for the address of your home. You might have a potential buyer there if you do decide. <laughs> so if you could put maybe put that in the chat, uh, put the address of it there for Jennifer. She may be looking for a, a, a property in Florida to retire to or 
have a uh, have a uh, rental herself. Then Lynn might not want to share the address either if she wants to keep it. They got to oh, keep that in mind. That's, that's definitely up to up to Lynn. If you sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I yeah. would hold off, Lynn, and once you're once you've made your decision, come back with that information if if that's what you choose to do. But I would say I had a property kind of similar in the same situation um, as you. I purchased. Um, I had to raise the rents on on my tenant, and I, I know a lot of investors on this call have done the same thing. And they could not afford to stay there. So be prepared if that's the route that you take. Um, it sounds like you you dealt with this tenant for quite some time. You you develop a personal relationship. But again, this is just business. And I had to evict that tenant. They didn't want to move, and I had to go the route of eviction. So um, you know they they drug it out as long as they could, and it is a business for me. So just be prepared for you know feelings and things of that nature to to come up. Um, I also would recommend in my personal situation, uh, I, I went ahead and got a lawyer to handle that. Not that you couldn't deal with the eviction on your own. Like you said, you do the Googles. But again, I was personally invested with this person. Getting the lawyer just cut it off and they dealt with everything. I didn't have to, to be that mean person. So, Hey, Amber, are you here in St. Louis? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to add uh, Amber is one of our board members. She's our uh, current uh, vice president, just elected for this year. Oh, so it'd be easy for me to find her phone number on your website, I'm sure. Um, not on our phone, on our website. But oh, you cowards. You want to talk to her? <laughs> sure. Dwayne, I will probably see you at the next meeting. So I, um, I think we've introduced once before, but I will uh, stop by at the next meeting if you're there. Okay, I already got Lloyd's number, so. Yeah, and I've got both your numbers, so uh, yeah. <laughs> let me know if it's okay to give it to the other one. It's always okay to give mine out. Okay, well, I know that. <laughs> wow. I, <laughs> I know you'll talk to anybody. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a good uh, good exchange there. So, uh, okay, anybody else? Got anything? Uh until I don't see uh, Kathy on here yet. I think John probably went looking for her. I'm going to contact her to see if she's going to be, on, be able to get on today. Is she going to come out all the time again or not? No, no. She 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 was just doing the first of the month. Uh, but okay, her husband medical issue. He seems to have an appointment, a uh, doctor's appointment on the first Friday of every month. So she's in the last couple of months. She's transferred. We switched her to the second Friday. That's the only change she's willing to come on but uh apparently i mean she might have had another issue today yeah i haven't heard from her i sent her just a yeah, note okay. and she hasn't responded but that yeah she's probably got something going on she'll yeah, she'll okay. get back with me i told her it's no hurry because i know her husband's been going through a lot yeah so that's yeah i thought he was getting well well, I don't know. He's got, I think he's doing better, but he's had a lot of, uh, a lot of um, things going. It's pretty major. You know, he had a, he had a lung transplant. So that's pretty major uh, surgery. I have a Sawzall. It can be really fast. <laughs> Hey, Carrie, speak out your phone number. There's somebody needing help with a loan. Uh, yes, there's somebody in the chat about uh, for a loan. I was, I was going to just mention yeah, that uh, Carrie's on. If she wants to talk, tell us a little bit about uh, what her services are at New Frontier Bank. Uh, sure. Um, first of all, your, your question uh, in reference to a credit union or a community bank or something like that. Um, I've worked for a credit union for 13 years. Um, a lot of them don't do the commercial lending. They use what's called a CUSO, which is a credit union service organization. And what that is, is like a bunch of credit unions will join force and open up a, a for-profit um, company that does like their underwriting, does their loans, you know, does all the things required by NCUA. Um, they are, credit unions can do it. Um, they're kind of straight, pretty much in the box. They, if it's, if it's anything 
with any kind of hair on it or anything that's just not perfect, um, the chances of getting it done is probably slim to none. Um, as far as, you know, community banks is, is a great place. I can tell you about New Frontier, but you get into the Chase banks and some of the bigger banks. Um, it's just not as, as friendly. And I think right now um, with rates and everything, you, people need to have a good relationship with their lender. It's going to talk about that a little bit on Tuesday, but um, you know, it's important because if the, if come maybe on what happens um, you know, you need to be able to work with your lender. So uh, that's just, that's just a tidbit, but um, new frontier, we are a commercial bank or a community bank. We're located in St. Charles. Um, we do commercial real estate mainly and um, I can give you my number. You're happy to sit down with you. There will be some documents, just like Dwayne said, or somebody said, it's, it's crazy at the beginning, and it is, but once you get going and once you get established, it's not as bad. So um, my phone number is 636-940-8740. And, um, you know, it's, it's, if you're going to, if you're looking to do something, you know, February 1st is coming up and rates are going up. So just letting you know. Did you have any other questions? Lanica, Loren Lorencia? Lorencia, good try though. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there. Hi, Hi everyone. Today is my first time actually hopping on and um, I launched my business the beginning of the year. It was kind of part of the plan and waited until the beginning of the year for tax time. And so I am actually searching out a small business friendly, you know, um, bank or financial institution. So I've been doing a little bit of that homework um, and just wanted to know, you know, has anyone tried any of the um, institutions here that are, you know, small business friendly, um, part of my goal is to really kind of build up my portfolio doing short term and long term rentals um, and um, working like during some wholesaling to kind of build up that cap, you know, that capital in the initial part of it, of the business. So I, I'm looking for really kind of the right institution for for me. The name of uh, my company is called Chosen Investment Group, and I am here in St. Louis. Was and I actually live in St. Charles. So um, just kind of wanted to, that's where I'm at <laughs> first is really just trying to get established with a financial institution that I can grow with. And, you know, as I get into more of the lending, you know, aspect of it, I have that relationship built. So um, I guess any recommendations so that I can kind of do research and, you um, yeah. So I have Carrie's information here. Um, how, how about your information? My information? Yep. My name is Laurencia. Yep. Hambrick. Yep. And my, I guess I'll give you my email address. It's L H at chosen That's LH, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. We might be hearing from Dwayne. Like I said, he likes to talk to just about anybody. So he'll Yeah, nobody else will talk to me. The newbies will. And <laughs> Who, Thanks, Lloyd. Dwayne, who are you and what, what do you do? I'm a bum. They pay me to irritate people, but I'm a, <laughs> I'm a, I used to be a full-time investor and uh, I've retired officially, but unofficial, or officially, my wife told me I should keep four because I like the business and that four grew to six and now I sold three of those. So I'm down more and I've figured out different ways to retire on this that is beneficial to me. And that was my latest problem was figuring out how to retire. And like uh, first lady was talking there, you go and you sell something, you, you got a big tax hit. So I've got a way around that. And I, 
I hope it's working so far. I'm, I know I'm still not missing any meals. <laughs> and and I know some small banks, and I, that's what I want to call them, ask Carrie about how the, how they compare us, because I know they should know how their competition compares. And I'd like to know who's the best deal out there or one that I could recommend easily and, and know that they'll be taken care of properly. So you'll be hearing from me too, Carrie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne, Dwayne's got a lot of a uh, lot of contacts. So uh... that's totally fine, Thank Dwayne. You. Thank you. You're welcome. If you want my number, I'll I'm happy to give it out, but you know, it doesn't matter. Absolutely. What is it? 314-255-3408. Okay, I put my information in the chat, so you have everything there if you want to call me, email, or however. Okay. Uh, that's Carrie that's talking? That's Carrie, yes. 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 Okay. Great. Yeah, I see Charles also put his uh, contact information. I believe he's a hard money lender. He's he's made talk before he makes loans. He's got his number there in the chat too. Yeah, Charles and Anthony also. So make sure you jot those down. Okay. 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 It looks like uh, Anthony's always open for a good discussion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Was that you, Carrie, that said you just put your phone number in the chat? That wasn't. Yes, I am one, two, three, four, yeah. fifth one up from the uh, bottom. I got to count to five. <laughs> Not going to make it easy. <laughs> ah, I found it. Well, okay, good. Yep. Okay. Anybody else got anything for us today? I'm Sorry. just going to give give my two cents. <laughs> Go ahead, Jim. To uh, Lorencia, did she leave? No, oh, she I'm is. here. She's still there. <laughs> I'm just going to give you my two cents. It's like anything else. Uh, you can think it's a good idea or not think it's a good idea. I Please. have my personal life is separate from my business life. I I do a credit union for my personal, but I have a separate financial institution for my business. I have a separate insurance company for my rentals. I, I just don't want anything intermingled and that's just me. So that's, I don't know, other people do that. Other people don't do that, but that's just one thought you might want to think. Just keep those two, two lives separate for, okay. for whatever reason. That's it. No, I was good, good advice for your personal liability production and yeah. Okay. Like John was talking earlier at the, uh, the book about the asset production. And uh, yeah, it's one of the, could be a good key for asset protection. Okay. Anybody else got anything for us today? I don't know if anybody else is looking for a roofing contractor. Melissa, I'll give, give you, let you say your two cents worth it. Right, unless you're so booked with business right now backed up. Uh, <laughs> you, you don't want any more customers. I'm sure you can find some customers here. Being backed up would be a blessing. Right? Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm I'm open, ready. We're ready to look at some some property here in the St. Louis area. Give me a call. My number is 314-504-1581. We do commercial and residential roofing. Um, if you need any interior work, I have a lot of people that I can refer you to. Um, if you need plumbing, if you need an electrician, a um, asphalt guy or concrete got concrete i'm sorry not asphalt concrete and just give me a call i can i'm happy to pass out um referrals for sure melissa what was the, the name of your company again and what all areas uh, do you service are you located we're uh one-way roofing and we kind of service the entire st louis area 
We also do work in Illinois. So and we will go all the way out to Wildwood and I, I've driven to Park Hills before. Um, so John's smile do, there. <laughs> yeah, do work out. Um, we've done work out towards uh, Dan, the Danville area. Um, Illinois, Illinois and actually Danville, Missouri. So yeah, it just really depends on the situation, but we do commercial and residential. We do uh, flats, tiles, and um, shingle roofing. So, and generally speaking, unless there's a reason you cannot have an architectural roof, we usually um, do an upgrade, a free upgrade to an architectural. So what was your number again? It's 314-504-1581. And on the other hand, if you have any questions as far as if you do have your own contractor that you want to use, I'm perfectly fine with looking over any kind of contract you have with them, um, you know, giving any advice freely. Um, you know, kind of just giving you information on things to look out for to help protect your home, um, your rental property, whatever the situation is, I'm more than happy to help with that as well. Yep, and you're also very good with working with uh, insurance companies too. I had very good experience uh, with, uh, with your team there. Working Thank with you. We that. really try. We really yeah. try. I, I was able to um, help somebody else in the group. I don't want to mention their name just in case, you know, they want to remain anonymous, but it was pretty cool because um, she actually paid out of pocket for a few things. And um, I was able to help get her some of her money back on things that were not necessarily approved by the insurance company at first, but but I work hard to do, and so does Jonathan. Uh, we, you know, we work hard together as a team to try and help get every penny that is rightfully yours back from your insurance company. Mm -hmm. yep. No, Melissa, this is Ann. Yeah, uh, you you can mention my name, but you did an excellent job, and we really appreciate that. Yeah, you did a good job in mine. I, we appreciate the opportunity. Mm -hmm. so the difference for, for me was I had had a couple of other bids, but everybody looked at me and I said, no, there's no, no, no point in contacting your insurance company. There's no, no storm damage here. But uh, jo Jonathan got up and found some uh, storm damage and uh, got up. It wasn't enough to pay for the whole roof, but it was made, made a good down payment for me. So but, uh, that's what made, made my decision to go with one way. Okay, anybody else have anything to add to the discussion today? If not, it's getting quarter to 12. I don't know about anybody else. I'm gonna be ready for lunch here shortly. Uh, uh, John, you wanna wrap things up here or I give a- I got a couple extra things here that I wanted to share, I guess, before we go. go, ahead. go ahead. Um, one thing tomorrow, I'm- um, let me see if I got this here. Uh, there, there's a guy in one of my groups. He's a billionaire. He's been homeless a few times and he's been homeless as, as recent as 2017. He's a billionaire now. He's been a multimillionaire on and off since he was 12 years old. And he just, his book came out a couple months, I guess a couple months ago. I just met him a couple months ago. His name's, um, I just put it in the chat, uh, Rami Betrawi, El Betrawi. And um his book is, can you really think and grow rich? He was, when he was 12 years old, that's the only thing he had being homeless down there in Florida. And he used the principles and he's built several businesses. He's, he's right now working with a, the country of Guyana down in South America. And his story is really good. If um, I would recommend getting, getting a copy of this book. Um, I just read it recently, but he's doing a, um, I got to put his website on there. 
He is doing a Zoom call tomorrow. Now it's limited to 500 people, but it, it, he did one over the holidays. I um, mean, it was about three hours long, but you'll actually have a chance to, with questions and answers and everything. If nothing else, I would recommend, I, could, I can send you a link if you're interested and send me an email, but I can send you a link to his last one. And um, I, I mean, I was there live, but it, go back and listen to it in little bite-sized chunks. But some of his principles he lives by is just phenomenal. I just want to share that with you. Um, if that's, that's something I recommend, you know, to, to learn from some of these people, he's, I met him through my coach through JT Fox, did a, uh, interview on his podcast. And then his book came, I bought his book, but I didn't read it for about two months. I took it with us over the holidays. We were down in Arkansas and I read it. And just by chance, he sent me a, um, email. He just did it. And he was, he was doing a, uh, a uh, webinar, a Zoom, or Zoom, you know, basically a meeting that night, which was kind of interesting. But he's he's in the um, he's in the uh, uh, the national group, Napoleon Hills Foundation, and there's just a lot of world class, high level people that he's in. So you may want to to you know check that out. And it, it doesn't cost anything, which I'm amazed he does because. But he doesn't need your money for anything. And he'll tell you that he's, he truly does want to help people. So uh, there's a lot of, a lot of things that I've picked up myself. And I think you guys could learn from that. So if you, if you want to do that, um, the, yeah, the other link, I'll be happy to do that. If you send me a private email, it's best uh, James, um, because I will do my best to remember it, but I get really a lot of things going on and it might take me a while to get back, but um, I'd be happy to send you that replay link. It's on Facebook, so it's not a not a big deal. If you're if we're friends on Facebook or something, just send me a message, and I'll be happy to connect you with that. Um, so anyway, and the other thing I wanted to uh, just to tell you real quick, something I did recently, and I think Eric Wheeler might still be here on the call. We got this, um, it's like an electronic, I call it electronic business card, but I don't know. There's more to it than that but to put everything together and yeah in in one place for me um it's linked to john.com with the number two and my, just check that out it uh it took me longer to get my information together than it did for him to help put that thing together and he's got we, we're looking at we actually talked to a couple people and he was looking at maybe doing a workshop and it's not very expensive to do this it takes you you know maybe a couple hundred dollars you can put all your stuff into one and one of the things that i'm looking at doing right now because we still carry um we were talking about this this morning i still carry paper uh contracts with me and, and stuff a file folder with me at all times in case we run into something for when we do run into people that want to buy or sell a property either way and then we we but we have the paper with us well, actually looking at putting one of these tabs in there with a contract in there so I could have people actually sign it on their phone and then email it to them instantly. So this is just another way to have all my stuff because right now, I don't know, the, you know, everything's kind of chaotic sometimes having the email, you know, I got the books on one thing, we got um, the properties on another, I mean, you can put your rental properties in there, you can put all this stuff. If you look at my tabs on there, if you look at the stuff, um, this is just something you can do, but all, the contracts is what we're looking at doing now, uh, where we can just do this all in one place. So you could come up with whatever name you wanted. Um, you know, mine, mine is linked to john.com. That's so much easier than trying to remember RE Quick Start and the dealionaire.com and all these other different places we have. Plus, you got your email addresses and your phone numbers and all this stuff. One of the links is, is simply contact me on the bottom. So, and that's something I'll recommend. In fact, if you want to link to um, Ramey's uh, replay from before, just send me, you know, go down here to this and, and contact me, send me a, just a note and I'll be happy to get you, you know, send you that link later. So check this out. It's something that I'm, I'm pretty excited about. Like I said, uh, it took me longer to put together, get together my information, like my Facebook page, my LinkedIn page, my, you know, all the different, you know, things I have than it did for him to even show me how to put this together. I mean, it was one of the simplest things ever. And it puts everything together. Like Melissa, well, you might you might have more than one phone number or one email address or different websites or different things you might offer, something like that, PDFs or whatever. You can put all these in just a little tab. And the nice thing about having it here is you can anytime you can go to link like in mine, link to john.com. I might be re, you know, putting something else on there because you can change the stuff quicker than you can print out a business card. So I mean, this is really, really I'm excited about this. This is really cool. And um 
you know, Eric Wheeler, I don't know if he's still here with us or not. We were talking this morning. Uh, we met a little bit early and uh, this is something that he's agreed to maybe we'll put together a workshop on this coming up. So just look at this, see what you think. Uh, feedback's always good. If you don't like mine, tell me what you don't like about it and give me some, some opinions and suggestions and I'll fix mine up. <laughs> so anyway, so that's just the two things I wanted to share, um, you know, a little bit off the subject, but not much. No, no, very good. No, uh, okay. Yeah, I think we had some good discussions here today. I hope uh, we all learned something and uh, passed along some information to uh, a couple of newbies and you know about uh, some services and uh, financial and uh, uh, contractors. A lot of good information exchanges here. So if we don't see you uh, next Tuesday at our live in person meeting 630 at the Shriner Center. Uh, hope to see you here I'm back again next Friday, 11 o'clock. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, John. Rob. We'll definitely check it out. Thank you. Have a great weekend, everyone.